Are you a mother? I am a mother by marriage. By marriage, I see. Um, and and my wife is here with me, so I'm really glad that she's here. Rather our, Sharon Klein. Ms. Weingarten, Weingarten, I reclaim my time. I didn't ask you a question. Sorry. What I'd like to talk about is your recommendations to the CDC as not a medical doctor, not a biological mother, um, and, and really not a teacher either. You had no business advising the CDC what the medical guidelines were for school closures because now we have a nation of school children who have suffered because of it. The problem is, is people like you need to admit that you're just a political activist, not General a teacher, ladies, a not a mother, and not a medical doctor. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want to make, just make note that um, the, the decorum of the attacks on the witness were unacceptable that the general lady from Georgia just did. And so it'd be nice if we didn't attack the witnesses, um, particularly whether or whether, and making a decision about whether or not she's a mother. You are a mother. Thank you for, for, for being a great parent. Thank you. Your point of order is recognized, Mr. Garcia. All right, guys. So as you just saw there, that was Miss Marjorie Taylor Greene tearing the head of the American Federation of Teachers, Miss Randy Weingarten, a new one, right? A new one over Randy's role in shutting down schools across the country and advocating for policies that you can argue were harmful to children's cognitive development okay their ability to learn okay and what they were actually learning while they were in school again <laughs> these kids weren't in school they were actually learning at home they were learning online a lot of these kids actually ended up not learning at all and they fell behind and now america's facing a crisis where kids are even dumber than they were before because a lot of kids suffered during the pandemic from the inability to actually get in-person learning and now she is facing questions about her role in that and basically she's trying to do a u-term and this is something that we're seeing from a lot of these public policy officials that advocated for these harmful policies during the pandemic that we now know uh again weren't necessarily a good thing and again they're trying to walk it back and do an about face and try to pretend like hey i had nothing to do with it right like for example uh, Dr. Fauci coming out here and pretending like he had nothing to do with the country shutting down or deciding to close down during the pandemic when he clearly was an advocate for uh, the country shutting down. Take a look. It was a personification of me as a person who essentially closed everything down. Those were public health recommendations that came from the CDC, and I have always been very supportive of the CDC. And when it became clear that when we had um, community spread in the country with a few cases of community spread, this was way before there was a major explosion like we saw in the Northeastern corridor driven by New York City metropolitan area. I recommended to the president that we shut the country down. <laughs> Boy. I got to tell you, man, wow, I love the internet, okay, because the internet is forever, right? Uh, Fauci definitely played a huge role in government policy in a decision to shut down the country. And again, because we know that that was the wrong decision. We know it was wrong to shut down schools. We know a lot of things that happened during the pandemic were just wrong choices by the government. Uh, the people that were responsible, instead of um, us locking them up in jail, <laughs> in prison, where some of these people belong, uh, we're allowing them to go on TV and to walk it back as if, you know, hey, they didn't advocate for this stuff. But like I said, uh, Randy uh, Weingarten, <laughs> right, is the latest public official. Well, I don't even know if she's really a public official. I mean, she might as well be. I mean, she's the head of one of the largest teachers unions in the country. And the teachers union have effectively uh, bought and sold a Democrat party because politicians are just prostitutes in suits right um yeah i mean hey you know they do anything that she says okay she's coming out here uh because she's getting a whole lot of backlash for her role in shutting down schools and hurting kids and their ability to learn now she's coming out here trying to defend herself and trying to play a bunch of clips of her uh, allegedly right advocating to keep schools open at least in public Let, let's uh let's take a look at what she's putting out here go back to in school we need to actually get back to in-person learning 
I am a big believer that we have to reopen safely and carefully. If you hear the frustration in my voice, mm -hmm, I do. we put out a plan at the end of April. The teachers want it. Seventy six percent of teachers say they're in for um, going to school because teachers want to teach kids. They want to go back to school. Yeah. They know that it's important for kids. We want schools to reopen. We know in school learning is better than remote. We've been trying to get kids back into school throughout the country and we worked with New York City to do yeah. it. All right, so again, as you can see here, she's playing some clips of what she said publicly, but uh, according to Elon Musk's community notes, which is a tool that Elon Musk has created to counter liberal fact checkers who only fact check Republicans, right? Uh, apparently, uh, Randy Gartner behind closed doors uh, was not necessarily for schools reopening. In, in fact, according to US News, she led an effort to consider a strike over school reopening. She also advocated to strengthen distance learning, online learning, uh, she also, uh, said that reopening schools, uh, was reckless, callous, and cruel, okay, attempts to do that, again, according to the Guardian, that's what she said, uh, areas with high union influence, right, so, uh, places that were influenced by her union, uh, remain closed much longer than other places, Okay, I mean, this is all stuff that is being used to fact check her statements again, because apparently, you know, in public, she would go on television and make reasonable statements. But in private, she would advocate for something else. And uh, there is a CNN never Trump a Republican by the name of Scott Jennings, who actually confronted Randy on uh, her role in the pandemic and shutting down schools. And I mean, <laughs> he's pretty passionate about the negative effects that this had on his kids and again this exchange right here is absolutely beautiful as she pretends that hey i had nothing to do with this stuff take a look um some our other panelists in scott yeah um we don't know each other but speaking on behalf of millions of american parents i have four at home i had to teach them at home my wife had to teach them at home i am stunned at what you have said this week about your claiming to have wanted to reopen schools. I think most, you'll find that most parents believe you were the tip of the spear of school closures. There are numerous statements you made over the summer of 20, scaring people to death about the possibility of opening schools. And I hear no remorse whatsoever about the generational damage that's been done to these kids. I have two kids with learning differences. Do you know how hard it is for them to learn at home and not in a classroom that was designed for them? And for you to sit in front of Congress and the American people and say, oh, I, I wanted to open them the whole time. I, I am shocked. I'm stunned. I'm stunned. And there are millions of parents who feel the exact same way. Okay. Go ahead, Ryder. So, I don't know you, sir, and you don't know me, but I have worked for the last 20 or 30 years helping kids every single day. I've been a school teacher. I've been a union leader. I knew and understood the importance of reopening schools and the importance of making sure that people were safe. And poll after poll that we did of parents, and I spent a lot of time with parents, said that they basically understood and supported that we needed to do both. I'm really sorry. You think parents about your wanted kids. to keep the kids? Nobody you, you wanted think to. Parents Nobody wanted to keep you kids at home. Kids. Why did we fail? How did Europe? And the rest of the civilized world get this right, and we fail. They had the, the how did they how did the that schools happen? the schools in Europe that opened sooner than we did, and most of them did, had the mitigating circumstances had the mitigating strategies that we were just talking about, and it wasn't negotiable. It wasn't oh well, it's inconvenient to have six feet or it's inconvenient to have masks. They had these things, and the other thing they did. And I don't know if it was right or wrong. The other thing they did is they prioritized schools over commerce. They prioritized schools over bars and restaurants and things like that. They did. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that Scott Jennings, okay, and how he feels as a father, it's probably the same as a lot of other parents that feel in this country in regards to 
their kids suffering from the inability to attend school and to get in-person learning. Now, while this uh, individual, Miss Randy Weingartner, goes on television and try to act like she had nothing to do with it, she can't really escape her history here, which is clear that, you know, hey, uh, behind the scenes, okay, and sometimes even publicly as well, too, she was an advocate for school closures. Like, for example, uh, she openly opposed uh, the U.S. Uh, Education Secretary, Betsy DeVos, vow to reopen schools, okay, uh, even as the American Academy of Pediatrics encouraged schools to reopen uh, classes in the fall of 2020. Again, Weingartner was like, no, <laughs> right? And clearly after the Biden administration, the union-friendly or union-bought-and-soul Biden administration um, took office, uh, her union was better able to exercise control. Like, for example, uh, there were conversations between the CDC and the ATF and the White House in which the teachers union suggested language to the CDC that resulted in schools remaining uh, closed or schools having remote learning for longer into the 2020 slash 2021 school year. So again, behind closed doors, uh, this person, this teachers union boss, because teachers don't want to teach, right? Uh, and again, they are uh, heavily influencing the Democrat Party because they bought and sold Democrat Party. Again, uh, she had uh, a heavy influence on public policy, and now she's trying to roll back and to say that, hey, I wasn't a part of this. I was always for schools reopening. And we know if that was the case, considering how, again, they're a large donor Democrat party, that Democrats would have been pro reopening schools, but they weren't, right? They were not pro reopening schools because, again, they have been bought and told that, hey, you cannot be pro reopening schools. And again, it's just kind of, you know, uh, satisfying to see a, a parent uh, go after Weingartner to her face and let her know how much damage she's done to children across the country uh, over her reckless policy recommendations. Again, these people are never held accountable, okay? And then that's the problem with a lot of these people. They're not even voted in, right? Nobody voted for these people. American people didn't vote for this person, but yet she had an outright influence on the learning of children around this country, and um, it, it really is a damn shame. Some of these people really should be in jail. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.